All right, folks, a little more on the Democrats' lawfare against former President Trump and other matters. We welcome the great John Ratcliffe, former director of national intelligence during the Trump administration. John, uh, that's not a new subject, you know, after today's news. I still can't figure out why in New York State, in order to exercise your constitutional right of appeal, you have to put up a bond, any bond, whatever, or cash. But the question for you is, how do you read this Biden lawfare attack on Trump? I mean, some of us, myself included, think it's completely backfired, no matter what these juvenile delinquent local judges say. What do you think? Well, Larry, I think uh, if you heard President Trump's comments uh, coming out of the courthouse today, one of the things that he said was uh, that he highlighted, which was right, is that you know they waited almost three years to start all of this, ah, uh, yes. and they waited because they because they didn't think he was going to run, and they didn't think he could run and win, and only when uh, it became obvious that both of those things were happening uh, did all of this ramp up. And because of that, Larry, because they waited so long, everything that we're seeing is so unprecedented. And what I mean by unprecedented is not just the fact that it's a case against a former president of the United States. But unprecedented uh, legal theories, novel legal theories, and unprecedented coordination between a White House and state prosecutors, and, and unprecedented uh, prosecutorial discretion or abuse of discretion in all of these cases where you, you know, you talked about it with Larry Jarrett, uh, uh, you know, in the Alvin Bragg case where they, they took an expired misdemeanor. Uh, and t somehow have turned it into 34 felony counts under some novel legal theory that nobody can understand. The case uh, with Judge or Eng Engoron, um, where no damages uh, and no victims, and yet a half a trillion dollar uh, uh, liability finding uh, that was made, in fact, before there was any testimony in the case. And that's before you even get to the Jack Smith federal prosecutor uh, who has violated the federal principles of prosecution every single day, the principle that says that a prosecutor shall take no action, the, the action, the timing of which will impact an election. Mm. And every single day, everything he does is to impact the election with the timing of his of his action. So the the my, my take on it, though, is the one thing I, I maybe would disagree with some of the uh, conversation is uh, and even President Trump said that he thought these cases were making him more popular. Um, I don't think they're making President Trump more popular. I think they're they're opening people's eyes. He's more sympathetic as a as a figure who's being uh, unjustly prosecuted. Mm. What's making President Trump more popular is Joe Biden. Joe Biden's mm. uh, unmitigated failures, both domestic policies and foreign policy failures across the board, uh, are making. President Trump more popular every day. People are longing for a return of those policies and the results that they had in the Trump administration. And I don't see that changing over the next uh, seven, eight months before the election. Well, you know, um, you know, John, the other thing that's interesting to me, even today in his press conference, Mr. Trump's uh, press conference outside the courtroom, which, by the way, he used no notes, no nothing. He just spoke and took questions uh, for anybody that doubts his energy and, and uh, cognitive acumen. But he also, John Ratcliffe, worked in the issues, the border, the inflation, drill baby drill. He mentioned Afghanistan. I mean, I think that's pretty smart, you know? In other words, not only the legal protests and all the juvenile delinquent judges in New York State AGs and all that ridiculous crowd, but he got in the uh, key issues that you just referred to where Biden is flunking. Now, I think that's pretty darn smart by our former boss. Well, I think it is because what it does is, you know, uh, this election, unlike 2020, uh, allows for a side by side comparison mm -hmm. um, for the critics of Trump who didn't like certain things about him or the way he went about business. Um, you know, didn't really know what they were getting with Joe Biden. We were told what Joe Biden was going to deliver, 
But now everyone sees uh, that he has been a miserable failure on every single one of those issues that you talked about, Larry. And I, and I mean that in the sense of, you know, Americans suffering here at home and Americans standing and America's allies suffering abroad because of the foreign policy failures that have, have continued. And, and so President Trump is very smart to whenever he gets the chance to line up the side by side comparisons. And again, I think people re remember now what they loved about the Trump administration and they see that Joe Biden can't deliver the things that he promised uh, three or four years ago. John, can I, I just, I should, um, running out of time, we're always running time. I love talking politics with you, but I want to ask you something. The Democrats, from Biden on down, appear to have declared war on Israel. I mean, the latest one is, in addition to Chuck Schumer's remarks, he wants to interfere with the election. Biden backed it up. But the latest one is in the U.N. They want an immediate ceasefire resolution, immediate ceasefire resolution, which runs, you know, counter to Israel's. Uh, in fact, we have here's Vice President Kamala Harris. Hang on one second. You got to hear this one. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafah would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. Are you ruling out that there would be consequences from the United States? I am ruling out nothing. I mean, there you have it. There, it's, Israel should absolutely not crush, annihilate Hamas. Well, I mean, John, I, I, this is to me unbelievable. I'll give you the last minute on this. Well, <clears throat> Larry, I think that, you know, uh, the contempt for Israel that was uh, hiding beneath the surface is now open and notorious. You talked about the U.N. Security Council actions today. Absolutely stunning that the U.S. would abstain on a resolution that called for a ceasefire that was not conditioned on the release of hostages. That is an absolute shift uh, in policy. And look, you know, I, I think that uh, you know, the United States should not be interfering in Israelis' military operations, as Kamala Harris just uh, suggested that we should be. We shouldn't be interfering in their political processes, like you mentioned uh, Chuck Schumer doing, calling for elections. Uh, and, you know, the Israelis shouldn't be taking advice from uh, a Biden national security team uh, that has been the architect yeah. of disaster after a disaster everywhere around the globe. What we should be doing is supporting Israel, who I can tell you as DNI, other than the Brits, is an ally that we work more closely with than anyone else and whose partnership is more important in issues like keeping Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Uh, those are the kinds of things why we yeah. should be supporting their efforts to go into Rafah to wipe out the same four battalions, Larry, the same four battalions that didn't just kill Israel but murdered 32 Americans right. and are still holding at least 10 American hostages. That's key. That last point, last sentence. Anyway, John Ratcliffe, former director of National Intelligence. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your wisdom.